Welcome to our webinar today, the, the future of manufacturing supply chains, uh, real ways that AI can improve process. Um, you know, what we're here today, uh, Cloud Kinetics has put this together. We're here to cut through the AI hype and find the use cases that drive operational efficiency to, to provide actionable strategies to supply chain leaders um, here today. And we, we have an excellent panel to do that. First off, I'll introduce Ivan. Yes, um, hello everyone. It's uh, my name, Ivan Blinov, and I have about um, 20 years experience um, working in the industry across uh, different um, endeavors. It's uh, for federal uh, government and commercial companies consulting. And I have technical background and I have um, master's in computer science, and also I have MBA from Virginia Tech. And for reason um, uh, accomplished, it's I actually have uh, AI specialty in product and services um, from MIT in Stanford. For current role, I'm serving as chief product officer in the PolyQ AI. It's a startup. Uh, it's specialized in delivering uh, AI solutions for uh, businesses uh, and um, one of uh, my responsibilities is helping business to adapt AI, it's develop strategy in one of the verticals we're working on, it's uh, supply chain management. Awesome. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, we're so grateful for your time today. And now I will kick it over to our second panelist, Justin. Hey, everyone. Justin Minnan. I have uh, served as a chief digital officer, CIO, CTO for a variety of companies uh, in a number of different industries, large and small. Um, also sit on a few boards, pr private and public, and I advise companies on things like M&A, activity, um, uh, digital transformation, AI adoption. And I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Awesome, Justin, we're so thrilled to have you today. Next up, I will introduce our moderator, uh, Salman. Again, thank you, Michael, for the wonderful introduction. Again, my name is Salman Razi. Uh, I am the VP with the Cloud Kinetics uh, Sales and Solutions Architect team. And Cloud Kinetics, uh, we are the AWS premier partner, and we provide services uh, with the cloud infrastructure, application, and most importantly, on the data and the generative AI side. And um, yeah, so having said that, uh, I would also like to personally thank Ivan and Justin for joining us today. Um, we are thrilled to have both of you here to share your insights on the exciting ways AI is transforming supply chain management. So, all right, so we have a fantastic discussion ahead. So let's just get started. Uh, so the first topic we are gonna talk about is AI's role in the supply chain optimization. So Ivan, uh, let's start with you. Um, so how do you see AI currently being used to optimize supply chain operations? And what are some of the promising applications that businesses uh, should explore? Yeah, it's AI, yeah, it's a changing world. You can see this right now. And But supply chain is one of um, verticals. It's uh, very complex. And uh, this is actually, it's a lot of challenges. And one of the challenges it's uh, everyone dealing with is uh, dynamic uh, forecasting. Because you want to make sure it's uh, it's some concept exists like just in time, but now it's a move on the next level. Like you want to actually produce exactly um, amount of uh, goods and services it's required by um, customers, and this is where you need a dynamic uh, forecasting. In um, other thing, it's uh, real time um, inventory. It's uh, it's a lot of good example. It's like. Uh, like Zara, it's um, it's one mm -hmm. of examples. They have um, on floor uh, checking for inventory, and they are able to trigger it uh, update of inventory in 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 requesting additional uh, products in uh, to be de deployed. And I think it's um, other aspect. It's um, definitely you have um, a logistic. It's like. Uh, this is where you need to make sure sure it's you strategically located at all warehouses. Um, but this has all exists. And if you look on Amazon, they're doing this for a while. And uh, you can ask like, how is this AI uh, going to change? It's 
bottom line is became available to everyone. This is, I think it's democratizing of AI. It's, uh, this is something new. It's, uh, you're able to do this not only for large organizations, you're able to bring this on small uh, business. You're able to really start using this and empower your um, business by right. using this insights. And as a matter of fact, you know, you brought up a good point there, right? What I am seeing uh, quite lately, right? Uh, we are moving away from selling it to the IT and actually going more towards the business, right? And trying to solve your business problems, right? Like just like the supply chain, right? So companies like AWS, Microsoft, Google, they are more focused on the real world business problems, right? Rather than the IT. So yeah, you're right, Ivan. Um, Justin, do you like to add anything to that? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I've been had uh, a lot of great points there, and I'll add on to a few of those. So, uh, at the bottom line, AI is definitely revolutionizing the supply chain. Um, mm -hmm. And like Ivan was saying, offering more actionable insights, you know, improving efficiency in an organization or reducing cost, right? Those are a lot of the, the key focuses in operations or manufacturing operations. Uh, AI can really play a key role in those predictive analytics. Like Ivan was mentioning, the the forecasting, you know, looking at you know, and analyzing past sales, market trends, you know, things like real time uh, you know, weather patterns, um, all of that enables the comp uh, company to really uh, optimize their inventory levels, you know, with actual demand, you know, minimize any kind of waste or any kind of stockouts. Another area. Um, in uh, supply chain optimization is supplier risk management. Mm -hmm. uh, in AI, I've seen a lot of use cases where AI is uh, enabling businesses to really continuously monitor supplier performance. And they look at factors like you know, geopolitical risks, the financial health of an organization, uh, what, what the, you know, the markets, how the market's behaving. And then the, a company can use that to proactively anticipate disruptions that are going to happen within their supply chain and adjust you know, sourcing strategies uh, before they actually have a problem come up. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, one more I would add is uh, warehouse automation. And in that particular space, AI, uh, you know, powered robots uh you know are now optimizing you know taking robots to the next level i would say they're uh, optimizing things like picking and packing inventory management and it and it's really helping focus on reducing human error and then improving productivity uh for for a business makes sense makes sense no thank you justin as a matter of fact uh, that's a good leave in to my second topic right like overcoming challenges is in AI integration. So what do you think uh, are the biggest challenges in integrating AI into supply chain management and how the companies are effectively addressing uh, these obstacles? Well, it, it, there's there's a lot of challenges. <laughs> right, definitely. I, I would say integrating AI uh, into supply chain management um, definitely has its challenges. But if, if you plan mm -hmm. things carefully, uh, there's... No obstacles that really can't be overcome here. The first challenge, and it's not just for supply chain, but really AI overall, is data quality. And and this I, I've seen across a number of organizations, AI relies on clean, accurate, and accessible data. Otherwise, it's not going to function effectively. And and many uh, businesses, and and I would almost put in there most businesses struggle uh, with fragmented, siloed data. Right. Uh, data all over the place, uh, and that hinders AI's ability to really, you know, do its job, uh, you know, provide any kind of accurate insights. So, so basically, you're saying the data foundation needs to be there before we actually implement and go after the generative AI or slash AI, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, your companies need to invest in actually cleaning the data. Yeah, integrating uh, the data so that they have a proper foundation to to work on. That's one key issue yep. that I've seen. Yeah, another is change management. And yeah, you know, for any major technology implementation, change mm -hmm. management is is a is a concern or a, a challenge, I would say. Yes. Uh, AI obviously being very new to many organizations, it you know, has has a lot of change management uh, you know, barriers that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. One of those employees, you know, 
you know, may resist AI. You know, they have a lot of fear around job displacement. You know, they don't trust necessarily automated systems. So companies can can address that. They can start small. You know, they can pilot projects, you know, demonstrate the value of AI, and then provide training alongside those pilots with their, their associates so that the trust factor is there and they, right. they get more of a collaboration mm-hmm. versus a replacement. And, and I think that goes a long way. So, you know, the two challenges, you know, focusing on the data, uh, the data foundation, ensuring that's there. And then uh, second, really the change management, you know, small you know, iterative rollouts. They were basically saying two things, right? Like change, uh, data foundation and change management, right? These are the, I mean, the big, uh, the, one of the biggest challenges, right? Uh, implementing AI. So Ivan, um, I would love to hear your thoughts, right? Uh, have you seen any strategies work particularly well what Justin just mentioned. Yeah, and actually it's uh, Justin, it's absolutely right. Like uh, data governance probably is most important thing. And uh, this is um, uh, everything is coming in new light because you can have um, overall data governance of, um, program in big organization because you definitely want to bring data. You talking about the quality, about integration, about availability reference data, master data. You know, I've been part of big uh, transformation for federal agency, it's uh, Office of Analytics. You're not able to make any uh, predictive analytics. You're not able to start using this information until you actually want to apply data quality procedure in end to end. In this case, data gardens, it's uh, with AI context, it's uh, became critical. It's like you, if organization delayed data garments implementation, now you have to rush in, uh, really start doing this right because otherwise you're going to get just uh, insights going to mislead organization. Mm-hmm. Um, other aspect, it's Justin already mentioned this. It's uh, this uh, workforces. It's like pretty much it's, it will be resistance in change management. It's playing crucial role because number one, it's um, you definitely want to make sure it's uh, people. It's aware about all the changes and uh, they actually willing to have the changes and they benefit from this. Um, I think it's whole motion of AI, it's kind of, it's not replacement, it's augmentation. It's pretty much where you start using a new powerful tool and it's making your um, everyday activities more uh, efficient and uh, yeah. you became more productive. This is, I think it's understanding of this uh, it's uh, supposed to change overall concept of uh, applying AI. And third thing, it's uh, I think it's uh, cost and complexity. In think about AI, yeah, it's usually it's uh, it's uh, it's business to developing developer, but it's uh, supposed to be B B two B. It's uh, this is where uh, everyone's supposed to benefit uh, by bringing AI, and you have to start small. And this is, I think it's whole idea. It's like, you don't need to rush and jump on AI. You have to bring AI in your organization, like small projects, try to optimize, try to learn and um, provide more details to organization and showcase how this works. After that, you're able to scale and uh, cross all organization. Makes sense. No, thank you, Evan. I think that takes me into the other big topic here. Uh, the digital transformation in supply chain. So what do you think, you know, like uh, how is the digital transforming, reshaping our uh, supply chain, particularly in industries that have traditionally relied on more manual process? So what do you see uh, how AI play in this transformation? I, mean, um, I think it's uh, it's some mistake, like people think digital transformation is <laughs> a one-time thing. It's uh, This is actually... This is where you have mindset. You have to start thinking completely different. You're changing business. Uh, it's not like process uh, improvement in automation. It's uh, visibility. It's uh, and I think it's good concept of digital twins mm-hmm. because you actually have to think about like how am I able to simulate organization in digital way. Digital twins. It's very powerful concept because you're able to. For example, it's able to produce new product, but instead of trying to um, actually have marketing, you know, it's all this uh, test uh, sales, you're running digital 
version digital twin of your product and you can able to see how you, the, your product interact with all aspect because digital twin it's pretty much very powerful um simulation concept and i think it's digital transformation it's uh it's touching everything and once again it's uh it's based on automation end-to-end -end visibility and using concept of digital twin and if you're able to successfully integrate in your organization you pretty much it's uh, aligned with bi transformation because uh, uh ai transformation it's kind of extension of digital transformation you're just moving this in the next level making this more intelligence makes sense makes sense well, thank you evan uh so justin i would like to hear your perspective as well like how do you see digital transformation impacting traditional uh, supply chain process yeah well like ivan was mentioning there you know, automation is is really key uh in in this space and and predictive analytics are also also key so if you take digital transformation and you know combine that with you know some of the AI emerging trends, you know, with automation in particular, you know, you can eliminate or automate a number of routine tasks that, that today you know people are doing, you know, in some ways uh, ineffectively or inefficiently. Mm -hmm. You know, things like inventory tracking, order processing, you know, in a lot of ways, customer service, um, many aspects of customer service. And that then allows businesses to really streamline their operations, focus on more strategic activities. Um, when it comes to digital transformation you know, in the supply chain, the focus I've seen is really end-to-end -end connectivity right now, you know, where AI can be used to integrate every single part of the supply chain, everything from procurement, production, right. to delivery, customer service, et cetera. And and it focuses back what we were just talking about the yeah you know, the seamless data flow and real time visibility. I love what Ivan was talking about with digital twins. That's a, that's a, a great concept and it allows businesses to you know more quickly simulate uh, you know different changes in their supply chain operations in a virtual environment without having to go physically you know yeah. deploy a bunch of things you know back to the start small iterate you know that that's one of those technology, digital you know, transformation trends that's really helping not only in supply chain, but in, in several other areas. Oh, perfect. Uh, Justin, so, so far we touched on more uh, of like, uh, you know, AI role in supply chain optimization, overcoming the challenges, and you guys all talked about digital transformation. But what do you think about the leadership now, right? So leadership in AI, how do you see, like what qualities do you think supply chain management leaders should possess? to effectively guide their organization through these changes. So could you share any examples from your experience? I know you- Yeah, I, well, I think first and sort of foremost, they, you know, the leaders have to be visionary thinkers. You know, they need to think about and anticipate how AI is gonna impact the supply chain and then help ensure that AI initiatives align with the actual business goals. So a lot of people are just doing AI to do AI you know, where it, it, they need to take a step back and think about how is AI really going to drive my strategy or help us achieve the business goals that we've outlined. So a leader with more of a clear vision of how AI adoption is, is really positioned, you know, within the organization so they can drive better transformation. Um, next, data-driven. You know, they have to be data-driven decision makers. You know, they should have a really strong understanding of, of the insights that are coming from uh, from AI and be able to leverage that data to make better informed decisions, more strategic decisions. That data first mindset, it's not it's no new thing, but it's it's critical um, you know with AI driven systems. And it's essential really um, you know within within your organization so that you know the the complexity within the supply chain is understood in a much better way. Um, Collaboration is another key uh, aspect for you know, for a strong you know, supply chain you know, leader that wants to drive AI. Mm -hmm. AI requires uh, cross-functional teams working together. You know, across thing, organizations like IT, operations, supply chain management. So those leaders need to foster a real collaborative culture that breaks down the silos with uh, across the organization, just like they would with any other large transformative uh, initiative. Um, so I, I would focus on those 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 three areas. You know, they have to be visionary, they have to be data driven, and they have to be a, a you know really strong collaborators. Makes sense. 
So, uh, Evan, um, what, what what do you think? What are the key leadership qualities you believe that are essential for leading AI? Uh, yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I think it's Justin. It just uh, nails it down. It's uh, you have to have visionary. It's uh, as leader, and you have to. Um, it's uh, really start using decision making process with consulting with AI because it's not AI making decision. It's still leaders making decisions based on insights what it is they getting from AI but I think it's a uh, key point it's uh, it's cross-functional um, leadership because you're not able to rely just on strategy you have to think about strategy to execution perspective this is where AI it's uh, get, uh, getting insights but you still have to translate the strategic objectives to specific uh, tactic, you know, in in a way how you're going to implement this uh, uh, specific strategy, and I think it's a crucial role of AI. It's not only just bringing these insights, but it's also doing kind of assessment, like what a dependency we have, and this is uh, where um, you can be surprised. It's how many good insights you're able to get by just. Uh, uh, asking right question and it's more importantly like you're able to uh, have context because uh, if you just using AI in generative AI it's uh, it's you have large language model and you have a lot of sources but they're not specific for your business this is where you come coming with a lot of aspect it's more technical but it's uh, I consider it it's important for business like if you are not um putting uh, your business, I mean, AI in your business in context, you're just going to have misleading insights uh, going to uh, turn you from your objectives and goals. But if you have more specific for your business, for your industry, you as a leader, it's able to uh, guide your organization um, and use these insights in the right way. Makes sense. So, you know, like, uh, so that takes me to the next topic, right? The ethical side of it, right? So now we talked about the leadership there. So now ethical uh, consideration that also plays a big role, right? In the supply chain. So Ivan, I mean, how do you see it becomes more prevalent, right? Like in supply chain, what ethical consideration should companies keep in mind, particularly regarding data usage and decision-making transparency? I think the biggest concern right now for any business is data uh, data privacy. It's pretty much you want to make sure it's you're not feeding sensitive information. You able to um, it's uh, have this inside stake in your organization. It's mm -hmm. a lot of good solution right now. It's like be able to have your local local version of your large language model like Llama. It's uh, you able to use uh, so call it's. Um, uh, retrieval uh, augmented uh, generation it's uh, pretty much it's your knowledge graph it's available on your organization but I think it's uh, it's most important thing for AI trust like you have to get this uh, level of trust you're able to getting this insights and you can see it's it's accurate information it's uh, also it's uh, ethical ethically it's uh, correct it's uh, all including all biases Mm -hmm. I think this is the biggest challenge right now for business because if you have AI uh, providing you false information or it's uh, using some bias, it's uh, really distract your business in trust of your customers. And But the good news is it can be handled in the right way. It's like technology, it's, uh, it's, um, it's available to do this, like you're able to, for example, get information from different large language models able to compensate by using right bias uh, um, uh, handling um, approach. Another thing, it's like uh, transparency. It's like if you're getting some insights, but you don't know where it came from, um, you're not able to trust this truly to this decision. And I think it's uh, transparency and um, uh, pretty much it's uh, it's understanding what is decision making process behind is okay. giving this level of trust and it's able to overcome all ethical issues with using AI. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, Justin, Ivan, what just said, said, right? So any additional thoughts on how companies can approach these ethical considerations in supply chain? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, what Ivan was saying was spot on. Um, and just to sort of you know dive into a little bit more in detail again, you know, transparency, like he was talking about. Yeah, you know, a lot of times AI systems are deployed as like a black box. Um, you know, in it, I think it it's you know that lack of transparency can erode the trust that Ivan was talking about. You know, where organizations really want or should be trying to focus on more explainable AI systems that have clear understanding from all the stakeholders uh, as to the reasoning behind the decisions, the you know, accountability, sort of the fairness, you know, back to like bias and 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 such. Um, you know, un if people understand how AI is making their decisions, uh, that that transparency and mm -hmm. trust uh, opens up within the organization. Yeah, data privacy is is, is obviously really key. Uh, like I was mentioning there, um, you know, AI it requires a ton of information uh, and uh, to be to be accurate, I would say. And and companies have to ensure that it's being collected, it's stored, it's used responsibly, that they're following things like GDPR um, uh, and proper data practices. Um, you know, in order to, to, again, really have a, a proper, you know, foundation, um, you know, for, right. for the organization to make ethical decisions based off of the AI, uh, outcomes that are presented. That makes sense. So, you know, that leads me into another topic, right? Uh, how would, uh, AI enhancing the supply chain resilience, right? So with global, just in like with global disruptions, like, you know, we had COVID-19 pandemic, right? How can AI be leveraged to enhance the resilience of supply chain, you know, in the situations like that? I think it goes back to some of the things we were talking about earlier. Uh, predictive risk management is, is, is really key. Like you were talking about COVID-19, uh, you know, the pandemic there, um, you know, organizations that had, you know, more resilient infrastructure and foundations in place, or maybe were driven by AI, were much better suited to uh, to really address uh, the issues that that presented themselves through COVID nineteen. Yeah, AI systems they continuously analyze data from a bunch of different sources, and you know to to analyze and, and to look at the potential risks. You know things like natural disasters, supplier delays, you know, mm -hmm. you know geopolitical type of uh, disruptions. Um, so this allows businesses then to adjust their supply chain and mitigate risk before they escalate. So a lot of organizations in COVID-19 were not uh, you know, situated in that way. And that, that presented you know, issues uh, across the supply chain, uh, the global supply chain. Uh, mm -hmm. AI allows you to really you know, drive real-time adaption. So when unexpected events occur, you know, say a sudden shift uh, in demand or uh, some supply chain disruption, AI can then dynamically um, adjust the production schedule or, or the logistics route or, um, or the inventory level to maintain continuity uh, versus having a stock out or, or a delay. And you know, during the pandemic, again, those companies that um, you know, had those systems in place were able to, dis you know, to adjust to those disruptions more in real time uh, while they could you know, still maintain some form of a service level, you know, within the, within the industry. Makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just said the last, last sort of piece yeah. of that for, for me is uh, back to mentioning earlier, but supplier based risk scoring, um, you know, if AI can more accurately uh, or help businesses better diversify their supplier base now, Mm -hmm. by continually evaluating all of those different factors we mentioned earlier and then offering alternative solutions so that um, you don't you're not just reliant on one single supplier you can shift as you need to because you have the data that's already been analyzed and AI is is presenting those outcomes for the, for the organization well that's a very good point Justin thank you for sharing that um so ivan do do you have any examples of how how ai can strengthen supply chain resilience especially in the challenging time just like how justin talked about yeah. it yeah mm -hmm. i think it's uh, overall risk prediction it's uh, it's is, is a key because one thing like you definitely have some understanding what type of risk it's uh, it's impact your specific uh, business in a way how it de depends on diversity of suppliers in the because um, definitely if you have suppliers far far away you can have all this uh, um, 
major impacts in transportation, you know, and delays, uh, and eventually it's going to lead to shortage of inventory. But I think it's uh, key. It's it's agility. It's like where you able to predict all the risk, risky, but eventually you're getting this uh, ability to mitigate this risk accordingly. And this is where you have um, most organizations they have risk model. It's like they pretty much trying to ad- update this risk uh, registry, for pretty much mitigate this risk. But one thing it's you want to do this dynamically. And this is like you have um, environment changing. It's every second. You know, it's like you can have uh, like, uh, we, we know it's political issues. It's uh, some logistic issues. But eventually you're able to uh, diversify this in a nice way. It's by uh, pretty much uh, identifying this risk. It's mitigation and putting uh, this agility perspective managed by AI. you able to pretty much address any type of issues. It's um, exactly. think about, you know, it's uh, um, traveling to space, you know, it's like you have... Mm-hmm three times, four times, four, five times reservation because it's some system fail, you have other coming. But the AI, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's be- it became expensive, but the AI is able to mitigate this in the way you, you're able to have a backup supplier if you have a supplier not available. And uh, I think this is key. It's like if you have this end-to-end perspective uh, um, in a, uh, not having AI in charge, but it's at least right. uh, rely on the insights uh, getting from AI, you're able to uh, do much better than, you know, if you just rely on some uh, enterprise resource planning system, uh, like traditional ERP uh-huh. systems. Makes sense. So, so, I mean, that takes me into my next topic, right? It's more the future trends. So what are the future trends in AI, <clears throat> you know, uh, emerge like uh, the emerging trends in AI should supply chain professionals be watching? And how might these trends impact the future of supply chain management? So, what do you, what would you say about that? Yeah, I think it's key. It's autonomous uh, supply chain. It's like where you have pretty much a self-serving uh, system. It's uh, rely on insights and acting accordingly, because um, when you have um, human in the loop, it's good insight. You're able to really um, move for this decision next level, but. Uh, eventually you want to have like good example it's amazon uh, warehouses you have rob- robotics everywhere you pretty much have uh, any order and you have uh, its system it's uh, acting it accordingly just uh, uh, putting this order in place uh, in shipping and this is everything happened at uh, uh, based on insight from ai and i think it's uh, uh, predictive analytics uh, uh, what we talk in beginning, it's like if you have uh, um, it's dynamic uh, uh, demand prediction. It's uh, this is where you're able to accumulate and uh, have some uh, re- uh, reserve. It's uh, a good example. Like you have holiday season, and uh, if by now which uh, goods it's uh, or you know it will be on high demand, you're able to create this reserve and you're able to supply this on time. And um, I think this is really a future of um, uh, integration of AI in supply chain. You have uh, autonomous, you have prediction, and you have um, mm-hmm. sustainable. This is other thing. Like you want to make sure it's it's uh, nature friendly. It's uh, and you're able to uh, use uh, green technology and in, the, in the, I, I don't know. It's like okay, all yeah. motion <laughs> of uh, going green. That's right. That's right. So, you know, thanks, Ivan. Uh, so, Justin, what's your take on the future trends? Anything particularly excites you? I think, uh, you know, you know I, I love the uh, the autonomous supply chain. I wasn't thinking about that. But uh, um, I would look more at, you know, hyper-personalization and then hyper-automation. Uh, I think those are two in addition to the autonomous supply chain that are really going to impact uh, the supply chain. Hyper-personalization, that... Yeah, that's really where you know the supply chain uh, it, it it's customized based dynamically based off of what the customers selecting and choosing and AI is going to enable that to uh, you know, like we were talking about having everything connected so, so when a customer you know dynamically builds something a product or a service then 
you know, the supply chain is going to dynamically, you know, be able to deliver that, that product or service in a way that that is not available today. That's one, I think hyper automation, uh, that's another area where you, know, you take AI, you take advanced robotics and things like IOT, and then businesses are able to really automate every aspect of the supply chain, um, you know, from the factory floor, you know, to the really the last mile. Uh, so those, those two, in addition to the autonomous supply chain, I think, uh, you know, will, uh, will really impact uh, supply chain overall uh, as AI gets, uh, gets adopted more, uh, more readily. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, so uh, Justin, uh, what would you advise for the new leaders, you know, to, for, who are already in AI or planning to adopt AI? So what would you, you know, uh, advise them from that perspective? I, I, I advise a lot of different uh, organizations uh, on how, where to start today. And I think it would be the same advice for, for these new leaders. Um, you know, many, many organizations are struggling as to, you know, first, what is, what am I, what value am I going to drive out of, out of AI? So you first have to determine what are you going to, what are you looking to achieve? Um, you know, and then as you understand that, you know, you have that vision as to what AI can do for you, you know, start small, you know, go, go run those iterative pilots. Uh, don't try to like overhaul the entire supply chain, but start small, you know, do manageable AI projects that have a specific pain point, you know, that specific pain point, you know, the things that we were talking about earlier, um, mm -hmm. you know, warehouse automation or, um, uh, you know, demand forecasting, you know, what, whatever, whatever the pain point is, uh, focus on that. And then, you know, work with the organization, start small, build trust, iterate, you know, train your organization and then scale. Um, you have to, you have to really invest in the data uh, and the foundation, like we were talking about, yep, um, exactly. you know, don't overlook that. Don't think that that can be bypassed because, you know, AI is focused on that data uh, and you're not going to get the desired results if, uh, if you have a, 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 a you know, an imbalance in Correct. the the foundation itself. And then last, I would say, don't, don't try to do it yourself. Um, uh, most organizations uh, don't really have AI talent. Uh, so use your partners, you know, use experts in the field and, you know, combine those individuals with your team, help your team learn and train as those experts are, are really leading those, those initial small pilots within the organization. So start with that vision you know, you know, you know, start small, you know, iterate, pilot, train your team, you know, make sure there's the right foundation in place and then leverage partners and experts that can, uh, can really help you. Makes sense. Uh, so I, I went, uh, just, as Justin said, right. It's just the beginning to, it's just the beginning of, uh, integration of AI into the operations, right. What advice would you offer? I, I actually concur with what Justin just mentioned. It's invest in talent Benefits. and in training. This is probably the first thing it's any organization is supposed to do because eventually you end up like everyone became on the same page, you know, what is AI is able to do, what is not able to do. Because um, I think it's uh, it's kind of um, overestimation, like what AI is able to solve all problems. It has some limitation. It's just tool is able to use wisely, but you definitely have to invest in talent. You have to do type of training. It's not only just uh, generic uh, AI, but it's way how it's AI is able to help this organization based on specialty. In supply chain, I think it's too broad. It's like you able to see this across the different industries way how it's 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 a retail it's it's like manufacturing it's a lot of uh, different aspect and you have to know it's all those details about way how it's AI yeah, it's able to um create max value and i i agree with justin it's like uh you have to consult partner with expert it's like if you kind of rely on your own talent it's yeah it's going to take the time but if you want to speed this process this is where you have to bring AI consultant. And this is pretty much uh, our organization does this. It's not only just delivery solution to business, but it's also helping um, our um, um, partners and our clients. It's uh, learning about AI and see how it's AI is able to bring this value. And if you define a strategic 
uh, implementation of AI, it's moving your organization to the next level. It's not just solution, it's just overall changing of concept of doing business. It's similar to digital transformation. In this case, I think it's, uh, yes, start small. It's uh, invest in talent in training mm -hmm. and uh, partnership with uh, experts. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, so I mean, uh, that basically brings us to the tail end of our webinar, right? So the last mm -hmm. question, right? Um, how do you see the balance between the innovation and risk in supply chain uh, in adopting AI? I think this is always key. It's like how you're able to balance between um, risk and uh, and bring to something new and, uh, and also add value. And um, my understanding of uh, this uh, perspective, like you have to do um, in small steps. This is uh, pretty much where you're able to play safe. You're able to bring AI as a pilot project. You're able to grow this and uh, look at all aspects of uh, talent uh, developing and also it's learning. And um, more importantly, like you're able to understand how this works in your organization and all this change management aspect is critical because uh, most of uh, um, resistance coming from workforces, people just, uh, not because they don't like AI, they kind of uh, can see threat. It's like uh, something new coming, it's new technology. You doing business as, as usual, but you have to bring this new perspective, like how is going to benefit everyone? It's like, this is supply chain. I think it's, it's a very crucial area. It's very able to kind of look in different aspects of supply chain. Mm -hmm. And you're able to, uh, once again, it's, you're able to start small, you're able to see how this works, but you're able to eventually have this uh, perspective. Uh, it's it's bringing new value, uh, strategic perspective for your organization. I think start small, uh, bring this uh, incrementally and uh, and think big. It's This is uh, uh, pretty much advice uh, how you're able to balance uh, risk and innovation. innovation right no i mean uh, so basically uh what you're saying that the companies need to strike the right balance right between correct. embracing ai right innovation and, and uh, managing associated risk correct that's what you're yeah. pointing that out so justin like just to piggyback on uh, what ivan was saying right can you expand more on the similar yep. challenges but more on the complex regulatory environments and you know so, so on and so forth i know you were in the leadership role in your mm -hmm. you know your past life right so how, how would you see that uh play into innovation versus risk well it's uh, it's risk versus reward right and at right. the end of the day you, you you every organization has to take on a certain level of risk uh in and again a controlled way you know you don't want uh uncontrolled risk but you know, understand the risks that are there, and and go and innovate. If you don't, this is this is one of those areas where uh, innovation is moving so rapidly at this stage. Uh, you you could lose uh, your competitive advantage or fall far behind a competitor if they uh, go and adopt these technologies and an organization takes a completely risk averse approach. So. Uh, like like we've been saying, you know, start small. You know, go go pilot things with you know meaningful outputs mm -hmm. that you can you know translate and, and share with your stakeholders, and then build on that success and get to the point where you can scale and you can scale fast once you have those results. Um, you have to you have to be in compliance with regulatory environment. Yeah, the regulatory environment. There's no there's no question uh, about that. So as part of those pilots, you know, make sure you're doing proper audits, you know, internal audits of, of the technology you know, that's being deployed and the AI solution that's being deployed, those pilots that you've been rolling out. You know, make sure that they're following all of those uh, regulatory uh, compliance you know, guidelines, you know, the GDPRs and all of those uh, you know, programs uh, that, again, minimize the, you know, the potential issues that you're gonna face in the future by doing it small and then scaling or addressing issues and then scaling. Uh, but you know, I, I think uh, organizations that are too risk averse uh, at this time you know, are gonna fall far behind uh, their competition. 
So everybody you know, needs to be thinking about, um, you know, how AI, you know, how, you know, just digital, you know, you know, transformation overall can really change the game for their organization and move them forward uh, or, or they're going to lose. Makes sense. Makes sense. So thank you, Justin and Ivan. Uh, so that wraps up our panel questions. Uh, so again, thank you, Ivan and Justin for sharing your expertise today. It's been a great discussion. So I'm sure our audience has uh, gained valuable insights. Um, so now we will uh, open the floor to the audience questions. So feel free to submit them in the chat um, and we'll take it from there. But in the meantime, you know, I will just go ahead and summarize it, what we talked about it. And then I go back to our panel, Justin and Ivan for the last uh, thoughts. Uh, so basically we covered like the nine points uh, Yeah, I think it's talking uh, about the AI role. Yeah, pretty pretty much we kind of talking about its way how its AI can be integrated in organization in context yeah. of supply chain management, and I think it's uh, balancing risk in innovation. And this is pretty much um, a theme. It's we have across all these topics because you're able to bring new technology, you're able to mm -hmm. um, innovate your organization, but you have to look on different aspect of um, change management you want to make sure it's you doing this smart incremental steps it's like i think thoughtful incremental steps and with focusing on data transparency um and this is a really uh, key to uh, transform organization because you definitely uh, have a lot of obstacles down the road and um, yeah it's uh, just kind of new thing it's coming right. but uh, it's coming very fast and if you late in the game you <laughs> actually behind uh, uh, your competitors in this case you have to balance like risk averse you know and, uh, and um, be too risky it's to jump because sometimes you can fail by just uh, ignoring some ethical regulatory aspects and this is uh, uh, like if you have fully automated uh, a new service you can uh, feed false information and it's going to lead to uh, some lawsuits and this is where you have to always balance and i think it's uh, most important thing it's uh, you have to develop talent and you have to consult with experts if you're doing this uh, you in uh, good hands you're able to uh, move faster you're able to be at least ahead of everyone it's uh, and this is the reason why it's ai uh, with uh, support of experts in companies it's uh, specialized in bringing ai solution to business critical because you want to make sure it's you're doing this um, uh, wisely and i think this is overall message uh do i mean uh, start small but uh, really bring this big vision of how AI is going to change your business. Makes sense, makes sense. You know what, uh, so we're going to pick uh, a couple of questions, you know, so one question, what uh, is it like, uh, how do you see AI impacting the future of supply chain jobs? Do you think that would replace certain roles or will it create new opportunities for workers? I mean, uh, I mean, we can start from you and then just- Yeah, can... it's, um, I think it's key um, answer, it's, it's segmentation. It's like not replacement because I think this is, uh, it's happened at many, many times in the human history. It's like you bring in your technology, it's everyone's care, like, oh, it's going, um, organization going to have a uh, um, big change in, um, it's just some uh, statistics, it's, uh, it's 20% of jobs that will be replaced. It's definitely, you have some redundant uh, job. It's um, it's AI able to do this much better. And uh, But this doesn't mean that people are just going to be out of job. They're going to uh, move forward with more advanced uh, 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 job uh, duties that they have right now. But 80% of job, it will be augmented. It means like you able to, it's the same like internet, you know, in, in uh, in the computers, it's it's bringing your skills on the next level. This is where you pretty much going to have your job change, and in supply chain, it's critical because you want to make sure you're efficient, you're able to have dynamic uh, forecasting, you're able to have inventory real time, inventory management. You want to make sure it's uh, you operate 
you know, in more efficient way. This key segmentation, I think, is a key. And 20% of job, it's uh, never going to be replaced. This is pretty much strategic thinking, way how you're able to, it's in, in all leadership in the executive position, definitely. You're not able to bring AI on this level yet, but you're able to consult okay. with AI to add more value uh, to your decision-making process. That's right, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Uh, so Justin, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would I would agree with uh, Ivan there and add that um, jobs will change, right? So if 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 I was in a highly manual task, you know, kind of position that can be completely automated, then uh, if I don't adapt, if I don't gain new skills, then yes, I will be replaced. But you know that's the challenge with any technology that rolls out, like Ivan was saying, over, over the course of time. You know, people have to continually learn; they have to continually train and and evolve to more strategic, you know, more value added roles. You know, the sort of the mundane, um, you know, tasks that can be done by a, a robot or by machine learning or by right. uh, artificial intelligence. Those are going to be decreased dramatically, uh, and they're going to continue to be decreased dramatically. But new positions are going to come. Um, you know, you know, there, there. People have to take, yeah, you know, the insights from these solutions. They have to manage these solutions. Uh, but people need to adapt, otherwise, you know, otherwise they they won't move into those new positions. Makes sense. Makes sense. So again, uh, thank you, Justin and Evan, uh, for your time today. Uh, any last thoughts? I mean, you know, I know we're coming to the top of, so just if you can summarize it, what we just talked about it, and you know, any last comments and thoughts from you, Justin, and then we go over to Ivan. No, I was going to say, uh, you know, you know, thank you again for having me. You know, Ivan, it was great collaborating with you on this as well. Um, yeah, AI obviously is is fundamentally changing the industry, uh, not just supply chain, but overall, uh, you know, all aspects of, of, of doing business. Uh, and organizations take, you know, should take uh, the approaches to to invest, you know, appropriately, you know, start small, you know, scale. And, you know, like like I, I want to say earlier, I have a big vision, uh, use the right partner network and, uh, you know, and move move these initiatives forward. Again, thank you for having me. And uh, I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. How about you, Ivan? Do you want to add yeah. any last uh, just one thing, it's uh, AI is brought um, new era, it's way how we doing think. And I think it's major change since uh, we had internet um, and uh, PC, you know, it's all this technology because this is first time it's uh, it's uh, AI, it start com I mean, it's this technology started competing with uh, human nature. It's like it's uh, all this creativity perspective, it's, uh, it's kind of belong to human, but you able to bring this on next level it's uh, it's not replacing human it's pretty much augmented it's uh, helping you to achieve the same thing in a more efficient way and i think it's supply chain topic it's uh, crucial because uh, you're able to um, align all this technology what has been uh, developed for the last uh, couple or maybe three decades like so you're able to have blockchain you're able to have uh, um uh yeah it's you're able to have any type of automation but all this together it's it's still based on uh strategic vision it's way how it's uh, business it's able to utilize ai power and i think this is where uh, AI yeah it's uh, not for developers it's for business this is i think it's a key message to everyone it's like you have to start using AI in uh, to augment your business and this is way you're able to be more competitive and if you play it in the game if you not consult with uh, AI expert if you not adopt this technology sooner you're going to just be behind makes sense makes sense so again hey, uh, thank you to everyone uh, you know who submitted such thoughtful questions and a big thank you uh, to our panelist Ivan and Justin uh, for sharing your expertise and insights with us today. We have covered a lot of ground today on AI role in supply chain optimization, challenges of the integration and future trends. 
So before we close, uh, I hope this uh, we, we hope this conversation has provided you with valuable perspective that you can apply in your own work. And again, thank you uh, to our panelists and the audience for participating. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out after the session. And we look forward to seeing you at the future events. And again, uh, one key takeaway from this discussion, as Justin and Ivan mentioned uh, many times, that AI is complex. I mean, it looks easy, uh, but it is complex, coming very fast. So you want to make sure that you have the right uh, partner and right people on your team to take you to the next level. So again, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Amin. Bye. -bye. Bye.